Good morning, everyone. It is December 25th, 2023. It is Christmas morning uh, in the LTVA here in La Posa of Quartzsite. So we have been working on weekly videos to show everyone how Quartzsite and the LTVA grow into the season as it grows into January. Usually peak season is for the Big Tent RV show and the RTR, the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. This will be our third installment of the series and we are going to drive around and show you what changes have happened. This video will be released in two different formats. One will be the long content form where everything's all in one long video so you can just sit back, relax and enjoy. It will be time stamped if there's certain areas like dash cam versus drone versus La Posa South versus La Posa North, if you're more interested in that you can skip ahead to. And I'll also release these in smaller increments so you only have to watch that one increment if that's what you're interested in. So welcome to our channel, we are Lady Ferns. Um, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. All right, I'm gonna take you along with it. It might be a little quieter than normal. It's a bit early and it's Christmas morning. So, so people could be all snuggled in bed still or having Christmas morning coffees with their loved ones. But uh, we're gonna take you out first thing this morning and show you around what Quartzsite looks like Christmas morning. Enjoy. All right, so La Posa North, here we are. Let's take a drive around La Posa North. Yeah, it's starting to feel a little busier here too. Yeah. Alright, the station's closed for the holidays as well. I would assume all four are. Four. A lot of people, to my knowledge, like to park here in the post north as well as the west because you're nice and close to town. Um, they usually have like e-bikes or bicycles or walk to town. That way you don't have to take the whole entire setup and rig. I feel like there's a lot more tenters here already. Perk Mount Peak Mountain Camps. That's a type of rig I've never seen before. That's pretty neat looking. Huh. My heart really went out to all the people in tents during all the rain. Saw a lot of them having to dry out all their gear afterwards. This road's kind of morphed a bit from the rain. Alright, and let's just turn around here. Too close. Class A's out here. Christmas lights all over his setup. Very neat. That's a pretty unique one. I've never seen one of those before. Another kind of schooly city bus set up. We've got a really nice kind of shade awning going on. I like that. Camper vans. Ones that pop up on the back of your truck. All 
all these white vans can be transformed into living spaces. Well, that is, that is a unique vehicle. Very cool. See out there in the distance? Kind of almost reminds me of the Ghostbuster car. I know that's not what it is, but kind of reminds me of one. That's pretty neat. Tent set. There's more tent setups. Got cargo trailer conversion. Another city bus schoolie kind of conversion. All right. There, off in the distance. There's that boat again. That's so cool. I wonder if it's like a little houseboat. And then they just have it on the trailer. big dip here in the road. I wonder if they got a lot of water during the thing, during the rain that we had, the rainfalls. Most of it's all dried up now, so that I think that's really wonderful. And that looks a little more pebbly and rocky. Yeah, definitely had some water here. Bus. Oh, that's a vintage RV. Let's take a zip by it real quick. It kind of reminds me of like a Shasta with the wings. Is that correct? I'm not too sure. Yeah, yeah, that's a Shasta. Shasta from Tennessee. Very cool. I love how some of these older RV, vintage RVs still have all these wonderful adventures. So much life to them. Like us personally, we're traveling in a 1972 bowler. Not everyone's familiar with a bowler, but it's basically a Canadian made fiberglass that predates the casitas and the scamps. And we got it about eight years ago and did a full restoration on it. But I would, it just would be fascinating to know what's the history of my particular bowler. What adventures did it see and go and do? And I'm sure the people that we bought it from, where it was just rotting away in a farmer's field, had no idea what adventures lay ahead for it. So it's just really neat to see all these old vintage RVs. I just really enjoy it. I'm going to go back to that other area near the pit toilet that I was last week. I said I would explore a little more. I believe, other than the pit toilet at the entrance, it's the only pit toilet in La Posa North. And there's been a lot of interest in the pit toilets because if you want to stay in the LTVA and you're not self-contained, which I'll post the rules down here below, but I think it's, you have to have a minimum of a 10 gallon fixed gray and black water tank. Um, so if you don't, you have to be within, I believe it's 500 feet of a pit toilet. So us ourselves, we fall in that category. We need to be near a pit toilet. So I can understand the extra interest in that because not everybody has the freedom to go way out into the LTVA and be self-sufficient with their bathroom facilities and the shower facilities that they have within their own RV. Um, so I'm trying to make an extra effort to show the pit toilets for that reason. motorcycle and cargo trailer.
Okay, so now we're headed to the pit toilets. If you're entering La Posa North, it's literally just after the check-in booth, and you take a right. Yeah, so it seems like everything's a little more disturbed here. Um, probably from the rainfall. Or kind of like little gullies where the water would have passed through. Probably in quite a little rush. Man. There's an ambulance off in the distance. They're off in the distance. It actually looks like someone's got a tent with a chimney coming out of it, so they probably have a wood-burning stove inside of there to keep keep warm, so that's quite fascinating. We have to try and find our way over there. There, of course, is the pit toilets. See if we can make our way over to that side. All right. This is a neat little thing. Very cool. Still some puddles left here. Not sure what these race flags meaning is. If it has a certain marker or of something, but and the cargo trailer. Lots of solar panels to keep powered up. A Colt bullet. Very neat. There's a pleasure way. We go. Some tenters. So we haven't gone this far down this road yet in these videos. So I'm seeing some new setups, some new things that we haven't seen before. if this road connects with the one just to the left of us. <clears throat> yeah, there it is. Yeah. So I see these people have kind of created themselves a little area between all their RVs, a bit of a wind block and everything else. Sure, where the road goes. Right. Hmm. This one, this one, I guess. Right. Looking for a little adventure. Yeah. All well, this would have been from the rain. You know, these roads are a little bumpy. There is nicer main roads that you can take. You don't have to take this route. Ooh, it's more flaps. There we go. Oh, this guy's got quite the setup of solars for his van. Impressive. Getting it set up for the season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
leisure travel. Those are called XTRs. Got a little outdoor tent set up. And sometimes people use these carport things. Other times they're really Skookum heavy duty um, car trailer ports. Oh, is that a Trillium? Very cool. I think that might be a Trillium back there. I've never noticed that one back there yet. Very cool. Fascinating. Yeah, I think it is a trillium. Okay, he's got a mural on his bus. Alright, this was the one with the tent with the chimney. Chimney smoke. So he's got a cargo trailer. And he's got his outdoor tent thing. With a huge chimney pipe. So he probably has a wood burning stove in there. And over here is the ambulance conversion. Very cool. Then on this side of us, we've got a oh, Penske or a delivery truck service kind of vehicle that's been repurposed. Cube van. It's fascinating what people can do with those. I've never seen inside of one personally yet, but um, I've seen videos of what people have done, and you can do a lot with them. It's very, truly, truly is impressive. out for a rip this morning on Christmas. Alright. Okay. So I'm just going to go near the entrance here. I'll park and get the drone up once more for everyone. Pretty sleepy on these roads this morning. I'm just beginning their Christmas day. I'm thinking in another week or two I'll do these drives, but in the middle of the day to really show the busyness. Yeah, basically to show the activity and the day to day interactions and movements of these LTVAs. I like to do them in the morning because I find the lighting's really nice and then it's nice and quiet so I'm not disturbing so many people. But to see this place when it's truly awake and alive with everybody moving around and going about their day and socializing and doing all the different activities they do, um, that would be an interesting way to see these videos as well. So I'll work on that for another, for another week to do that.
so that was the Posa North. Now we're going to hop on the highway, head south towards La Posa South and Tyson Wash. I am breaking these videos up for the people that like it that way. So if you want to see more and you're not watching the long form content, I'll provide links in the description below if you want to try and follow along with the journey. Um, or you can find the video where it's all in one long format. I'm trying to make it as convenient as I can for people in the different ways they like to see things and learn. People have their different modes of transportation to get into town. I have heard that during the RV show, the lineup can be all the way past here to enter. Um, I didn't have that experience last year. Last year I was there 10 to 15 minutes before the doors opened, did the whole early bird thing. And I didn't have any issues with long lineups and finding parking. But I have heard stories and seen the lineups. Uh, so if you're one of those people that have a slow start to your day or want to do things in the afternoon, it is something you do risk because thousands and thousands of people do go to the RV show. Um, the town is usually at its peak around the RV show, um, the Big Tent show, and around the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, the RTR. So something to keep in mind, like I said, I didn't have any issues with long lineups trying to access the big tent and uh, getting in, but I also was there early before the doors open just to avoid all that madness. It's not really my cup of tea. So um, another thing I would suggest is if you're already in Quartzsite, stock up on things before that week. So what we did to make it a more pleasurable experience was just before the RV show began, we went to town, we topped up all of our propanes, we topped up all of our waters, and we topped up our cash. Um, or if you're coming to town for those things, you know, I like to support the town, so I'm not saying don't support the town and get propane here, but try to come here fully stocked because it was not uncommon last year to see people right around town um, saying all the ATMs were out of cash or the reverse osmosis stations being completely sucked dry. Um, I saw people in line for the propane pl propane places like 20 minutes before they even opened. So if you want to avoid that, I recommend being prepared just before. Okay, now we're headed to La Posta South. 